let's talk about the Rockwell hardness test. So behind me is a typical hardness tester that you'll see in a lot of shops and plants. These machines uh, last forever, basically. They can be repaired and recalibrated to like new. They don't make money by themselves, so shops typically don't want to replace them. So you will see a lot of machines like this that have a dial on them. Now, of course, newer ones have a LCD screen that displays the, the hardness values. This one reads off of a dial. So there's several different Rockwell hardness tests that can be performed with the exact same machine here. The difference in the tests is the penetrator and the force applied. So let me talk a minute about how we change the penetrator and how we change the force. So the penetrator will be right here. There's typically a little set screw that releases it and we can pull it right off. There's two kinds that I'm gonna talk about. The first is the diamond braille. So it's a, a conical tip and it's got a, some kind of super hard alloy and or diamond that pushes into the metal. The other kind is the 1 16th ball. This has a little tiny ball bearing on it that presses down into the metal. So why, why have two different ones? Well, the reason is that the harder a metal is, the more resistant it is to indentation, right? The way we test hardness. So the ball tends to spread out the force. So if you have a softer material, the ball gives you a superior hardness reading, whereas the conical-shaped diamond indenter, indenter provides more force in a very small area so that it can dent very, very hard steels. But it wouldn't be as good with aluminum because it might just bottom out, right? All the force would be applied and it would just uh, it would give you a bad reading, okay? So we got the two penetrators. The diamond braille is typically for hardened steels. The 1 16th ball is good for aluminum, uh, cast iron, and normal low carbon steel. So the next thing we have on the back of the machine is a stack of weights that fit in the machine with a little hook. So there's three combinations of weights. All three is 150 kilograms of force. You take one off, you have 100 kilograms of force. You take the other one off, 60 kilograms of force, okay? Easy as that. So you might wonder how you know which combination of indenter and weight to use. The answer should be written on the machine somewhere. In our case, it's gonna be written right on the back of the machine. It gives you the name of the Rockwell test and the combination you should use. So I'm only gonna talk about three, Rockwell C, A, and B. Rockwell C uses the diamond indenter and the 150 pack kilograms of force for hardened steels. Rockwell B uses 100 kilograms of force and the 1 16th ball indenter. It is for uh, steels, low carbon steels, aluminums, malleable irons, things that aren't quite as hard as a hardened steel. And Rockwell A uses the diamond indenter, but only 60 kilograms of force. So this is kind of a bridge test. It can be somewhat accurate on softer steels because there's less force being applied, but it still has the diamond indenter so it can indent hardened steels. Rockwell A spans the range between the soft specimens from B and the very hard specimens that a C would test. So Rockwell A can be used to determine which test, which bait, which test you should use. So if uh, you're on the high end of a Rockwell A test, you might want to test it again with the Rockwell C to get a more accurate reading. If you're on the low end of a Rockwell A test, you might want to use a Rockwell B to get a more accurate reading on the specimen. Before you test, always make sure if it's not written on the machine, go ahead and look it up, figure out which combination of indenter and weight you use before you start testing. If you get the combination wrong and you think you're recording Rockwell A and you're really recording you know, the equipment for Rockwell C, your answers could be wildly off. The newer machines, 
are digitized. So you're just going to punch in, I want a Rockwell A test, and it'll tell you, hey, put this diamond in, enter in to get the correct results. So let's do a test. I'm going to use the calibration block that most hardness testers come with. This one is calibrated to 64 HRC, which is a very hard steel, okay? So when I test this, I should get you know, within one or two of 64 to prove that the machine is working correctly and my setup is correct. So Rockwell C, I'm going to use the diamond indenter. It can only go in the machine one way, right? So I make sure it goes all the way up, wiggle it a little so there's no slack, and then let's tighten the set screw. If you have slack in your indenter, when you start doing the test, it'll, it'll mess up your reading, okay? Because it's going to think the metal is softer than it is because it went some extra distance. The next step, I'm going to check my weights back here. They're a little difficult to see, but trust me, there's 150 kilograms of force back there. I'm going to grab this handle. I'm going to make sure it's pulled all the way back as opposed to being all the way forward. So I wouldn't want to start here. I want to start right there, okay? This moves the anvil up and down. I want enough clearance to get the workpiece under the indenter without scraping it, okay? So I'm going to gently slide this over here. First, I'll wipe it off, make sure there's no dirt or debris. Wipe this off, make sure there's no dirt or debris. I'll get it centered for my first test. What I mean is I wouldn't want to put it all the way over here to test the first one if I don't have to. I'm going to slowly move this up until I make contact. When I see that needle move, I know I've made contact. So now, so now I'm touching the indenter to the workpiece. My needle started to move. This needle is going to indicate the minor load. The minor load is 10 kilograms of force. It moves the indenter slightly under the surface of the metal and provides a baseline for the rest of the reading. So the way I set the minor load, I'm going to move the handle. I'm going to watch the big arm of the clock move. And I'm going to keep an eye on this little hand move. I want to line up the little hand with that dot. Okay. So when the little one is lined up with the dot, I know I have my minor load set. The next step, moving the hand wheel down here. I can move my dial around. I want to line up the big hand of the clock with the part that says set, set. Okay. So that's where the machine is going to start its reading. The next step, I'm going to apply. So now I'm going to apply the major load. The way I do it is with this paddle, I'm just going to slowly press it down and release. Okay. If you can see, the handle moves forward very slowly. Give it plenty of time to do its thing. After it stops moving, maybe give it, you know, five seconds so it fully settles in. Pretty satisfied that it's settled. So this is the most important step that's really easy to forget. Now this reading right here is not the final reading. I have to pull back this handle again very slowly. And this will be the actual reading on the dial. So this dial has two sets of numbers. The red numbers are the B scale and the black numbers are the C scale. So I'm going to read off the C. I'm right under Rockwell C of 60. The block calls for 64. So we got a little variation, but if I took a couple more readings, it would probably zero in pretty close to what we were looking for. Okay. So that's the basics of the operation of the Rockwell 
tester. There's not much more to it. Just make sure you've got the correct indenter, the correct weight. Make sure you do the operation correctly, including pulling the handle back when you're finished with the test. Make sure there's no debris on the work piece. Make sure the work piece isn't cupped or bowed so that it can move around as the test is going. And be sure to take several readings. You never want to trust one single reading for a hardness test. Usually you take at least five and throw out the highest and throw out the lowest reading, okay? So that's all there is to it. I'll have another video soon about the Brunel tester. I'll do another one about the electronic Rockwell tester, okay?